is one of the side pieces. Just using a scroll saw to uh, cut those shapes in. Well, we just did a little biscuit joint right here. As you can see, a little biscuit cutter on the router. And uh, we'll go ahead and put the, the shim in there and glue this all up for, uh, for both sides. Well, after going uh, and <clears throat> taking a second look at my wheels, uh, these were right at an inch thick and it looked a little I don't know, like Tinker Toy-ish. So I uh, decided I'm not going to go with that. I'm going to go with this oak that is uh, quite a bit thicker. <laughs> and I think it'll give it uh, maybe a little bit of a squatty look, but uh, a little bit more in proportion and um, definitely make it a little bit heavier. The oak is heavier than the cherry. And... Uh, That'll help with the mass for when the cannon's fired. So we'll go ahead and get these cut out. There we go. That'll be pretty good. <laughs> Alright, I'll make the rest of them and uh, be back in a bit. Alright, now I think that looks better. Because remember, when was th these were here, I don't know, that looked a little little tinker toyish with just the one on there, you know, with the, with the skinny ones on there. Okay, it means my axles will have to be a little bigger. But again, you know, mass down at the bottom uh, of this carriage is probably just going to make the cannon perform better. So, got that going. And uh, over here on the router side, it's being used as a drying table. Got those going. And uh, I suppose now I have to start making the axles. One thing. Okay, I just wanted to stop and what I was doing here. This is the last wheel, and I want to show you what I was doing. Um, this is the center hole that the big hole drill that I used, which is right, oh, there it is right there, to make these wheels, obviously was already the center point. 
But now because I had to drill them out to the axle height, um, diameter, I had, you know, I had to take it off the machine and go do a bunch of other stuff and bring it back and find that exact center. Now what I do is I found a drill bit, same size as that original hole, mounted it in the drill press, and then using this vise and the adjustments, I left all the adjustments loose, put this in, brought it down until that bit was in that hole perfect, and then tightened everything up, ran it down, make sure it was still perfect, then changed out the uh, drill bit for the Forstner bit that I'm going to use to uh, make the final size hole for the axle. And then because on the other side, the Forstner bit would break through and it would kind of make it icky, once I've cut through about three quarters of this wheel, I'll stop it, loosen up the vise. Now, obviously, finding where the bit goes back in is easy because the hole's three quarters drilled. I will slide this piece of waste pine underneath it, not bother tightening a device, don't need to, just hold it by hand, and when that Forstner bit gets to the bottom, it'll make a nice clean hole like that on the bottom because it'll drill through the oak into the pine and just make a nice clean hole. If you don't do that, I mean, I could just run this straight through because there's a space under here, but it'd probably break out that oak and just make a bad looking cut. So let me get this one done and we'll move along. Now this is the body of the carriage, and uh, I'm just going to show you this because it's sometimes uh, the tools just get a little loud. I know at least some of them previously were. And these, this is one of the cross pieces that's drilled for the axles, and they need to fit down in. Now the original cannon, this part was just bolted to here, but I wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, again, I'm going to fire this. So I wanted to make sure it lasts. <laughs> so I went ahead and dadoed that to fit. And while I have a dado blade, because some of the materials I'm working with are not standard sizes. In fact, sometimes I just have to go into my scrap pile and what I have is what I can use. So the measurements on this were, let's just say a little too organic to take out the, uh, the dado blade and just cut everything perfectly. So what I do here, really is just set the depth of the blade just like you would if you were using a dado blade and then used a knife just basically laid the part on there made a knife edge mark here and then a knife edge mark on the other side and just ran it through back and forth going a little bit at a time using the fence for the first cut and then as I got very, very close, just going as sometimes as little as like half a millimeter at a time, once I got exactly where I wanted to be, where I knew it was going to fit, bring, I bring the fence in. That way everything stays perpendicular. And as you can see, the fit is pretty tight. <laughs> in fact, once I get it all together, you'll probably see it uh, in a video later. I, I'd use a wooden mallet to tap it into place, which is exactly what I wanted to do. So, moving right along. Alrighty. Well, there is the all the rough cut pieces. You can see, obviously, it needs some finishing and some other parts. I'm going to have to make the uh, axle pins, the straps that go here, the coin. I might even notch this so the coin is more usable, I haven't decided yet, and then start sanding an assembly. But uh, just wanted to give you all a little update as to how it's going, and hopefully uh, quite soon, maybe in the next video, I'll be able to show it finished and firing, but we'll see. Oh, there's update number two. More to come.